patient came in um, shortly after we bought the practice <clears throat> and uh, I was, you know, doing my hospitality bet and I said to them, would you like a cup of coffee? And they said, um, uh, yeah, do you have any filter coffee? And I was a bit embarrassed to say that we didn't. Um, and if your initial reaction to that is, you know, who do these people think they are coming, you know, <laughs> North London asking, you know, demanding for filtered coffee, the answer is there are people who pay you and me a lot of money, you know. So, um, and if they normally drink filtered coffee, then um, it's a bit much of us to expect them to step down to um, granules when they come here. So I'm a great believer that. Um, in a shared environment, in any sort of commons, where everyone's contributing to the cost, you should be able to do better than average. You know, you should be able to. One person can buy a settee worth five hundred pounds, but uh, five hundred people can buy a settee worth a thousand pounds. You know, they, the facilities in a shared space should be better than they can they get they get at home. Um, it, um, you know, things uh, lights should be brighter, um, floors should be better, walls should be better decorated, the staff should be politer, etc., etc. So um, let's um, get some cracking, and um, I'll sort of explain how we do things here, or, or how we try and do things anyway. It doesn't always work, and you can't always start <clears throat> at the top, but you have to sort of start with things like filter coffee and work your way up. Um, <clears throat> filter coffee is a good idea in the surgery um, for one reason and one reason alone, and that is the smell. A lot of people <coughs> like uh, the smell of freshly brewed coffee and, and also obviously fr freshly baked bread, but seeing as you can't really uh, be breaking, uh, baking your own um, French sticks, um, then uh, coffee's there, see? Oh, that's, you know, that is lovely. I keep it in the fridge. I don't know whether you need to. I suppose you do need to. I'm doing my tax returns today, so I think I'm going to have an extra couple of spoons. <laughs> uh, and, uh, now, obviously some people don't drink um, uh, caffeinated coffee, so what do you do for those people? Well, the answer is <clears throat> you get... Um, Hang on a second. Where are they? There we are. You get you get decaffeinated um, cup filters for them, and these make one cup of really really nice coffee. But they have not been opened yet, um, which shows you that in fact there's not a tremendous demand for uncaffeinated coffee. But if someone came in, uh, you know, someone perhaps who was pregnant or something, and said, "Have you got any decaffeinated?" Then we can say, yeah. "As a matter of fact, yes, we do." Now, not everyone drinks coffee either, so what about tea? Well, we've got, we've got tea anyway because the staff um, obviously drink tea. And um, the other thing we've got is another type of tea, and that's uh, green tea. I mean, if you, you can go the whole hog and get white tea if you like, but I mean, I, I think for anyone who um, doesn't want coffee, doesn't want decaffeinated coffee, doesn't want tea, and, and you've still got green tea to offer them, then I think you're doing pretty well. And then um, we have actually got other stuff, which is, uh, well, I mean, they can have a cup of soup if they want. But um, we buy sort of decent coffee. I'm still experimenting with what type of coffee to get. We've got, uh, let's have a look. We've got this, which is the Sainsbury's Taste the Difference. Uh, it's pre-ground. You can actually get coffee grinders um, for less than £100 now, where you actually put the beans in. And I think when we upgrade, I think that's what we'll get. Um, but for the time being, this is um, we're experimenting with this, and then this is the sort of the expensive stuff. We're going to experiment with that as well. And what we're looking for is something that not only tastes absolutely fantastic, but smells fantastic as well. In fact, if anything, it's the smell we want more than the taste, which is a shame, because I've had a bit of a cold lately, so I'm not... Our, our coffee brewing experiments have not been going very well because I've not been able to detect the smell. But uh, now I can certainly smell it now. And then, and we go for um, uh, the uh, fair trade coffees because we are. I don't know if that's fair trade. 
I think we bought that because we wanted to know what a really, really expensive coffee would smell like and whether it will be well. Yeah, so, so there you go then. So that's free trade for you. As soon as uh, you know, one comes on that smells a bit better, free trade goes out the window. No, I didn't realise that wasn't free trade, but um, we, did, we did buy those because they're free trade or fair trade or whatever. Um, yeah, so, um, so we're still experimenting. And by all means do. What I'll do is I'll, uh, oh, and the other thing is that these uh, milk cartons, you can put milk out, but people don't uh, like, you know, milk, they don't know how long it's been around, and et cetera, et cetera. So we, we put these out, the uh, UHT semi-skim. UHT milk doesn't have the odd taste it used to, um, so in fact these are, these are pretty okay. And we put a small, um, well, I'll show you, come on. Come around the corner and I'll, uh, I'll just uh, show you. I'll put the I'll put the coffee on. I'll fill the uh, I'll fill the uh, jug up and fill it up, and then I'll show you what we've got. Right here we are. So we um, had to get a plug put in here. We've got plug it's plugged in the surgery on the other side, but uh, not in this uh, particular area. And. Uh, it just so happened that one of the patients was an electrician. Uh, it wasn't difficult to spot. He used to come in with a, one, you know, the, one of those um, vests on that say blah blah electrical services, and so he was complaining about uh, the cost of everything he needed. And I said to him, "Well, look, you know, we can do do you a favour here, and perhaps put a bit of business your way." So um, he's going to move the socket for us and uh, <clears throat> I think in general that's not a bad idea you know if you can um, do put a bit of business back you know to your patients um, it's a lot of goodwill you could say well look Derek you know you could you probably know someone who could come down on a Sunday and you know a cousin or someone who could run that through for you and I suppose we probably do or if you don't then the nurses do but um, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's the old saying about, isn't it, the, uh, the workman is worthy of his hire, you know. Um, I, I used to do too much of that. You know, I used to lay lino and uh, uh, rewire things and, uh, in, with hindsight, I probably should have done a bit less, you know. Oh, I'm just going to put this in and then, uh, well, uh, a nice cup of coffee. There's the uh, milks I was talking to you about, and then these, these are the um, apples which we put on. Um, you know, you might ask, well, what sort of patient sits here and eats an apple? And the answer is probably very few of the patients do, but their husbands do, or, you know, if the husband's in the chair, the wife will, might help themselves, or the kids will have an apple. But the whole point is that they're selling this healthy image, you know, the, 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 the oral health message, the dental health message. It's, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, as the saying goes, but apples are also associated with dentistry. So having them here and offering them free is um, not an expensive way of getting across a very powerful message about diet. This is, this is, this is a sort of a, a sleeping hygienist, this bowl. Um, so, um, and also some decent crockery, you know, um, something that you've, you've bought, not something that you've just... Uh, or you bought something for home and you bring your home crockery in. Make it, make it a decent size and make it sort of fit. It has to fit in with the ethos of the practice. You know, it's a bit, um, a bit funky, a bit wacky, and then, uh, and then a sort of a subliminal advertising message there at the back for anyone who helps themselves. Why apples? You say, well, okay, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put, we'll put some fruit out. We'll put some apples out. We'll put some oranges out. We'll put some bananas out. We'll put some grapes out, etc. But my advice would be to stick to apples. The reason is that um, they are inoffensive uh, as fruits go. Um, I don't know if you've ever sat across the aisle from someone who's eating an orange on a train, and you'll know they stink the place out. Um, bananas, you, you know, half a banana is the banana skin, isn't it? I mean, what do you do with it? And bananas, they're only nice for a day, and then they go spotty, and then people don't want to eat them. And um, Grapes, I suppose, are okay. Um, but... Apples are fine. The reason why we don't have many in here is because it's a Sunday and we're going to refill them tomorrow on the Monday. But a big bag of apples from something uh, somewhere like Sainsbury's is not very expensive. 
And also you'll notice that they, they, these are not big apples. These are sort of quite small lunchbox type apples. They're not, people are not going to want a massive Granny Smith in here. Um, they're just going to want a snack, you know. So um, you can buy, buy the right sort of apples. If you can, buy British apples. Because, um, again, the patients will look at what you're buying and expect to see British apples in here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, most of them won't care. Uh, whether they're from South Africa or Australia or Britain, but one or two will, and it's the sort of thing that almost everyone will notice, you know, and, uh, and appreciate. So, um, let me just show you one or two other aspects of the service side of what we provide for dentistry. You may wonder why, as a dentist, I'm blethering on about coffee <laughs> and not the filling material we use. And in fact, we can, and I probably will do a video on the filling materials we use. But for the time being, I'm just trying to show you we're a private practice, how you can perhaps get, just get started on the private ladder or how you can improve your private practice if you haven't already thought of these things because for the patients, especially the accompanying persons, these things are just every bit as important if not more important than the actual dentistry. The dentistry that they assume the dentistry is going to be good. You know, it sort of goes without saying that the dentistry should be good. It's whether you're good at the rest of it that uh, sets you apart from the rest. I'm a uh, right-wing neocon. I'm sort of conservative with a small c. Um, I uh, believe in the public sector, you know, as far as it goes, but I um, also believe in a thriving private sector and uh, entrepreneurialism and uh, uh, private uh, industry and uh, initiative and stuff like that. So I come to this surgery because the uh, I like the dentist, the quality of the dentistry is high, and. Um, uh, they give me a free copy of the Times to read while I'm waiting, which is good because um, I don't uh, at home I get the Telegraph, so it's always nice to uh, come in and uh, have something to read. I wouldn't call myself left-wing, but I'm sort of, uh, or even a liberal, but I suppose I'm sort of quite liberal on most things. I. Uh, uh, I'm a big supporter of the National Health Service, although I do believe that uh, you should have choice. And uh, I uh, work um, in education, and I like The Guardian. I like the sort of stance they take on liberty and individual uh, freedom, uh, also privacy, security, and uh, they've got a ton of stuff about uh, the arts and, um, uh, and education, which is why I read it. And uh, um, I come to the surgery because I like the dentist, and they do, you know, they look after me. Uh, and also because they uh, give me the Guardian to read, which I can't afford to get at home. But uh, it's nice to read it when I come in here, and uh, always find it interesting um, while I'm waiting not too long to have an appointment. You're ready for me. Thanks very much. I'm a computer geek. And actually, I don't come here. My wife does. She's having £11,000 worth of implants, which is a lot of money, isn't it? But then she looked at me and she said, am I not worth it? I mean, and what can you say? So, anyway, they look after me. I like it because uh, they've got a TV here which has got a Chromecast in it. And so, if you download the free Chromecast app, you can throw anything from your phone onto the TV. So you can watch what you like, you can watch your own movies, um, you can watch uh, anything on YouTube you can put on. So I sort of keep myself amused while she's in the chair. And uh, also, they've got blistering fast Wi-Fi. It's uh, 100 megabits. The um, password's on the notes board up there. And um, they've got carbon fiber because they're an innovation center. So 100 megabits is great. Uh, so it means I can keep in touch with, and you know, pick up my emails. I can even I download my, I could download the Encyclopedia Britannica if I wanted to. Um, and that's all free. So I'm happy as Larry. I'm sitting here and watching what I like on the telly. I'm I'm using my phone, and uh, I'm waiting for that coffee to brew because it smells absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee in a minute, and uh, I think I might have an apple as well. So I'm very happy.
genuinely sorry you can't be here to smell this because this is fantastic. But um, anyway, that's about it for this uh, topic. I know we're pretty well passed on uh, the essentials, you know, the important stuff. So um, uh, I'm going to wrap up now and uh, get off and do uh, the staff wages, um, which we is all is all computerised. We don't, uh, like most dentists, have um, an accountant to whom we send everything in a shoebox every month. Uh, and perhaps I might make that the subject of my next video. Cheers.